In December of 2020, I ate a bunch of ice cream, then wrote about it for my high school newspaper. It ended up being one of the best things I've ever written. I present to you, The Ice Cream Story. Here at the school newspaper, we have a long history of stories titled, The Best Insert Food Item Here in Portland. It's a time-honored tradition, because sometimes you don't want to write a big story about some social or political issue. Sometimes you just want to stuff your face with food and call it a story. And after last month when I decided to cover the presidential debates for some fucking reason, I found myself in that exact position. So I called up my friend Jack to go around the city with me and eat a bunch of ice cream. Jack is very allergic to dairy and would die if he actually ate any of the ice cream. This is not actually a problem because I find it very funny. Jack finds it less funny, but I don't care what he thinks. Because I wanted to be thorough in my journalism, and because I wanted to eat a bunch of ice cream, my list of ice cream places ended up being 11 items long, straddling four corners of the city. It would be a lot, but I knew I had what it would take. Jack had to cancel at the last moment. Silly me, I forgot that my friend, in his profound foolishness, apparently has more pressing matters than going around the city with me all day watching me eat ice cream. Stupid shit like... homework or whatever. That's fine, I would just text him throughout the day, asking him his opinion on all the ice cream I was having. With all my problems solved perfectly, I left at noon for a long day of ice cream tasting. My first stop was Cloud City Ice Cream at Southeast 45th and Woodstock. I want you to imagine an ice cream shop, just first thing that pops in your head. Yeah, that's what Cloud City looks like. So I was expecting something pretty standard. I got the regular opening, and I ordered a scoop of dark chocolate salted caramel ice cream and a waffle cone. That's basically my taste in ice cream. The chocolatier the better, with peanut butter or caramel if they're available. And always, always in a waffle cone. I got a kid's scoop, which looks kind of dumb in a waffle cone, but like, I had 10 more ice cream cones to get through that day. I was really gonna have to budget my stomach space. I was pleasantly surprised. The chocolate tasted great, and although I could just barely taste the caramel, the salt made all the difference. There's no gimmick to Cloud City, it's just standard ice cream, but they do it well. But what does Jack think? Jack, what do you think of this ice cream? Jack. I just woke up. What do you think of the ice cream? How the fuck am I supposed to know? That was good. Now for the next 10. <laughs> the next place on my list was a longtime favorite. It started in Portland, but it was so good that it's gone national, kind of. That's right, it's Salt and Straw on 33rd and Division. As always, I ordered a scoop of chocolate gooey brownie and a waffle cone, then sat on the bench outside as the flavor lifted me into heaven. Remember how I praised the salt in the ice cream at Cloud City? The salt in the ice cream is half this place's namesake, and it is so fucking good. Their waffle cones are also a standout. They make them in-house, and you can smell the aroma drifting down the street as you walk towards the shop. Salt and Straw is the most transcendent ice cream experience I've ever had, and Portland's gift to the world. If I were to marry an ice cream cone, I would marry this one, no question. I got <clears throat> salt and straw on my shirt. Good. Saving it for later. Now what do you think of this ice cream? Looks ugly. Just a few blocks down from salt and straw is Eben Bean Frozen Yogurt on 30th and Division. But Henry, frozen yogurt is an ice cream. Shut up! Yes it is! After two scoops of chocolate ice cream in a row, I decided to change it up a little bit, so I got vanilla. In a waffle cone, of course. I usually think vanilla ice cream doesn't have much taste, but the vanilla was surprisingly strong here. Pretty good. The waffle cone doesn't taste like a waffle cone. No. It's like a cookie, it's like a sugar cookie. It's not bad, it's not a waffle cone. If you're in the mood for some frozen yogurt, Eben Bean is solid. But I would personally just walk five minutes to Salt and Straw. If you want a second opinion, it started raining while I was eating it, so Eben Bean is Mother Nature's least favorite on this list. What do you think of this one? Looks worse. Your feedback is appreciated. I kept eating on my way to the next place. And that's when it really started to set in that maybe eating three ice cream cones in the span of an hour and a half might be a bad idea. I like ice cream and all, but I was struggling to get that froyo down my gullet. But, as the determined journalist I was, I persisted. By the time I got to 50 Licks, East 28th and Burnside, the rain was pouring down. You're just gonna have to imagine. Unpleasant? Sure. Logistically challenging for eating ice cream? Sure. Was it gonna stop me on my quest? Never. I ordered a scoop of chocolate AF, which I'm pretty sure I remember being called chocolate as- 
Man at one point, which was a better name, but probably harder to order. They gave it to me with the cone face down in a bowl, which was odd. What do you think of this one? That's just how they gave it to me. Okay, that's just sad. Tell that store that managed to make a depressed kid even more depressed. I tasted it and... So normally my mentality is the more chocolate the better, but... This just tastes like I'm just licking dark chocolate. It was called chocolate as... So I probably should have expected this. This is too much chocolate. It's, it's just too much. It's as advertised. I was expecting less. I, did, I was wrong. <laughs> With my stomach already full of three other ice cream cones, rich dark chocolate was not what I needed right then. Now, at any other time, give it to me. But not now. If you want a second opinion, the rain cleared up and a rainbow came out while I was eating it. So 50 Licks is Mother Nature's favorite on this list. 50 Licks took me a while to get through, and the nice place was only two blocks north, northeast 28th and Everett. So the employees of Staccato Gelato definitely saw me through the window, finishing an ice cream cone before going to their shop and ordering an ice cream cone. Italians and pedants, I hear you, and I do not care. I ordered cookies and cream because I was tired of all chocolate all the time. Time to tone it down to some chocolate all the time. Anyway, Jack summed up my thoughts and feelings pretty well. It's fine. Anything else? No. The colorful branding of furniture makes the Cala Gelato stand out, but other than that, you could get ice cream of similar quality at a grocery store. Again, Italians and pedants? Shut up! I don't think I've ever been less hungry in my life. Five, six more to go. My stomach was full, and my will to keep going was diminishing. But fortunately, the rest of the list was across the river, in the city center, so I had ample time to digest. Okay, ample is an exaggeration. I had a solid 30 minutes to start converting cream and chocolate into body fat and excrement. It really did help, but before long, I was at my next destination, Ruby Jewel, on Southwest 12th in Washington. Okay, so in the three and a half years since I wrote the story, Ruby Jewel closed down its only brick and mortar store. However, they still sell their ice cream coolers in basically everywhere that sells ice cream, so I just got one at a nearby Whole Foods. Ruby Jewel is famous for its ice cream sandwiches, which I didn't know until I got there because I made this list by searching ice cream on Google Maps and writing down the first 10 that came up. I ordered a fresh mint jewel, which in English is mint ice cream between two chocolate cookies dipped in chocolate. This shit <clears throat> is so minty. In a good way. It's not like chocolate ass <laughs> where it's like overdoing it. This is very minty, but it's good. It's like if toothpaste was an ice cream sandwich. That sounds not flattering, but trust me, it's good. Honestly, Ruby Jewel isn't really a fair comparison to other places on this list, since it's an ice cream sandwich shop, which is a markedly different experience from an ice cream cone. Unlike gelato and frozen yogurt, which are just ice cream that wants to feel special, yes, I will die on this hill. But still, Ruby Jewel tastes great, and it gets a solid recommendation from me. I don't know if it gets a solid recommendation from Jack, considering he was too busy doing schoolwork or whatever to respond to my DM. What do you think of this? Answer me. Jack. Too late, Mr. Chance. Next was 22 Below, on Southwest 18th and Jefferson. It's a bit hard to see from the street, and Google Maps kept leading me to the United Methodist Church down the road. The sun started to set, and I was about to go up and review the church instead. But luckily, I was able to find the... Yeah, it turns out in the time between writing the original story and filming this recreation, they moved to a spot that was easier to find, so... It's a pretty good church. Big. Made of bricks. Don't know how the worshipping is. Don't have much experience there. Ask a priest. It's a pretty good church. Anyway, at the new location, Southwest 19th and Alder, there were a bunch of weird flavors, including stuff like green tea, passion fruit, and lavender. But I got PB Twist, which was peanut butter, chocolate, and salted caramel because I'm boring. It turns out, they sell rolled ice cream, which I hadn't previously heard of. Apparently, it's a Thai thing. Basically, the guy puts the ingredients in a cold pan, does a bunch of magic with two scrapes, and suddenly you're handed a few bits of ice cream in the shape of rolls. It was mesmerizing, and a bit confusing, but oh my god, this was some of the best ice cream I'd ever tasted. I'm guessing it's because the ice cream was just freshly made right in front of me, but it tasted so vibrant, and I was so amazed, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it was better than salt and straw. I know I've already pledged to marry salt and straw, but if I were to have an extramarital affair with a bowl of ice cream, it would be this one. This is ice cream. Discuss. Actually, it looks kind of cool. That gets to call gelato and 50 licks. I honestly didn't know if I could do this. 
I thought there was a pretty good chance I have to give up. Now, I know I've got to finish this. <laughs> hey, look who it is. It's my good friend, Ron. How's it going, Ron? Looks like it's not going super well. Looks like you're kind of severely injured right now. Next on my list was, oh, look who it is. I know what you're thinking. Haven't you already been to Salt and Straw? Yes, yes I have, but it had another location on my path, 23rd and Kearney. And as I previously stated, Salt and Straw is amazing. The second best ice cream I've ever had. And my ice cream fiance. I got salted caramel this time, and a waffle cone, of course. My tongue met Salt and Straw for the first time in a very long five hours, and it was just as good as I remembered it being. No, better. While chocolate gooey brownie is my favorite, any of the flavors are good enough to remind me that Salt and Straw will always be my one true ice cream love. Please nobody tell about 22 below. This one. What do you think? Looks pretty good. A lot of gelato on 23rd and Lovejoy was closed. Zero out of 10. The sun was fully set at this point, and on my way to Miss Oz Ice Cream and Dessert on Northwest 11th and Johnson, I understood the end was in sight. After six long and difficult hours of leisurely walking around the city and eating ice cream, there were only two places left. At Miss Oz, I ordered mint chip and a waffle cone. And boy am I glad I chose this one first, because it would be an incredibly anticlimactic one to end on. It's alright. It's fine. It's okay. I've had better. I've had worse. It's perfectly passable ice cream. What is your opinion? Again, pretty nice. At long last, I had reached my final destination, Northwest 13th and Johnson, Little Chickpea. This place sold ice cream made of chickpeas, which is a very Portlandy idea. Basically, they wanted to make ice cream that's healthy and available for anyone to eat, regardless of dietary restrictions. Everything is made of chickpeas, so no matter if you're vegan, have a nut allergy, have a gluten allergy, dairy allergy, anything else, you can eat this ice cream. Wait. Dairy allergy. Hey Jack. Finally. After buzzing like a fly around my friend's head all day, demanding opinions on ice cream you couldn't possibly taste, we were finally together in the flesh, and we were ready to taste some ice cream, together. We both ordered a scoop of triple chocolate and a waffle cone, then stepped outside to eat. As we ate, I told him about everything I had gone through that day. The pouring rain and the rainbow, the magic man with the scrapes at 22 below, my profession of, doubt of, and reaffirmation of love for salt and straw. It had been a long day, but in the end, you could say that the best ice cream is the one you share with a friend. Well, you could say that, but you'd be wrong, because Little Chippy sucks. It tastes off when you lick it, and it leaves a distinctly non-ice cream aftertaste. It's an interesting idea with a noble mission, but chippy ice cream just doesn't taste like ice cream. And it just doesn't taste good. The cone was even worse. It was chewy and tasted like chickpeas. I felt like I was biting into a room temperature chickpea. If I wanted to bite into a room temperature chickpea, I would bite into a room temperature chickpea. Nothing stopping me! Little chickpea was the only ice cream cone I had that day that I just couldn't finish. Jack liked it, but I don't care what he thinks. Wait. They closed down. <laughs> Get fucked, Jack.